filthiness and overflow of wickedness. James gives you a good description of this where he says, draw near to God. See, the come as you are world means to come while your heart is still full of guile. It hasn't been emptied in this process of brokenness. That has to happen. Or you're never gonna you're never gonna see the light. You're gonna be trapped in your sin forever. Forever. And perish in it. James says, you know, you submit to God, submit yourself to God. James four, seven through nine. And draw near to him, and the devil will flee from you. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. See, you do it first. You do your part first. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. You double-minded people that think you're wretches. You think you're the wretched man. Quit posting that stuff and come to your senses. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. I don't see any pride there in that kind of repentance. I don't see somebody, look at me, God, what I did. I, I see somebody, they're laughing. They're not laughing. They're weeping. There's, there's no joy. In it. There's brokenness, contriteness. Like David says, a broken and a contrite heart my Lord would not despise. Yeah, if it's emptied of guile, the Lord knows. The Lord knows when you come clean with Him. Humble yourself in the sight of God and He will lift you up. What James says. That's what drawing near to God means. Not going up and repeating some words after the pastor and then everything's hunky-dory and you join some group. You find yourself a wife or a husband or uh, some couple's group or some other thing that you can pass your time with. No. That type of repentance. That type of repentance and faith with deeds leads to redemption. Redemption. Release from bondage. Release from bondage. Even remission means release from bondage. Along with the remission of the past sins. So what we're dealing with, I think here with this, why they won't repent, is we're dealing with a mindset that's absolutely thrown away the necessity of synergy. As I've mentioned before, that's, that's workers together. You look that up, it's, it's our word for synergy, the scientific term. Two, two or more things working together to produce a result, result that can otherwise be attained. But that has to be present in salvation. But what they did was they took it out of the picture altogether and they substituted it with a provision or an alternative to the obedience, as we pointed out in our last few uh, lessons. In the provision that never took place. See, what Christ did was to release you from bondage and show you the example to follow. So they've rendered then redemption impossible. That's why we fight so hard with this. Because they've rendered redemption virtually impossible. Can't say a person can't see the light and come out of that mess. They have. Many have. We, we have a small group of people that meet all the time. and They've come out of this mess with, with God and come clean. See, until a person can admit within himself that it's his own responsibility to seek God, to draw near to God, to cleanse his hands, to get, his, get rid of his double minds, like, like James says, purify your hands, purify your, your, your hearts, wash yourself, make yourself clean, like Isaiah says. See, until a person can do that, in repentance and broken humility, doing his part, then he's never going to find true salvation in Christ, because his dispositions are never going to be changed. It's always going to be some cloak for it. It's always going to be some excuse why he's still caustic and mean and hateful and cussing and all the rest of it. See, your unwillingness to stop sinning is your doing. It's your doing. It's not because you were born that way. There's no genetic uh, defect in you that you can't come out of that mess if you put enough effort forth to find God. He's there. He's already done everything and he's doing everything required to bring you stretching forth his hand to mankind not willing any should perish calling, drawing all men. He's doing his part. The Holy Spirit convicting the sin of the world of sin, righteousness and judgment at all times. He's not willing they perish. He calls all men everywhere to repent and follow Jesus. Like he says in Acts 17, 30 and 31 when he was preaching to the Greeks. 
calling all men everywhere to repent. To do the deeds that need necessary to bring you to God. See, man's part is to obey God. The imperative to stop making excuses for your sins. See, but the deceivers, when they gain control of your mind, they neutralize you into a position where you embrace this falsehood and it becomes a reality to you. Just like anything else, just like politics or, or whatever you choose to follow in life. You embrace it, you think it's true. Because no matter what they say about doing what's right, like I said, the pundits under this system, or how many times they, they talk about Jesus or quote the scriptures, it's all underscored with this falsehood of inability, with this substitution gospel, the alternative to obedience. Whatever it is, whatever it's a satisfaction, whatever it's, it's, it's a provision, it's a penal, penal idea that punishment was poured out, it all substitutes man's obedience and then hinders his free will to obey. That's what it all is. Inability, the provision, alternative to obedience. So whether or not you stop sinning, under this mess, the outcomes of your salvation is secure because of that substitutionary arrangement that your preacher harps on week after week. It's all underscored with that, no matter what other moral lesson he has in his message. It's all underscored with the, everything's been done. So it makes no difference what happens to your life, even if you fall into grievous sin. In fact, the Westminster Minister of Confection says that you will fall into grievous sin to humble you. How far from the truth could that be? Sin hardens you. Doesn't humble you. So, everything they teach and believe in Christianity today is underscored by this alternative model. These, these other alternatives to redemption. These penal, this moral government, the substitution, whatever it is, whatever you name it, it's an alternative to doing what you know you got to do. Won't be easy. A lot of you are really, really under deception and really in bondage to your sins. I understand that. It's not impossible to come out of it. I've seen some mighty work done in this process in my life. And I thank God for it. He's using me to bring this truth to the world. And try to bring us together. Those of us that are out of the system, we've got to join forces with this message. I'm not saying you got to join my group or send me. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying this message has got to be proclaimed without mixing it with all this error. That's what I'm saying. So there again is the answers to the questions. Log on to my website, sandinagap.org, email me, hold them firmly, whatever you need to do. But understand, repentance and faith is proven by deeds, and man has unhindered free will and ability to do those deeds. That's what we preach.